This is an enchanting table in Minecraft, and this is a real-life enchanting table built from Lego parts. It has a book that can open and close, flip pages, and track the user. Wow. It also has an enchanting interface, with three enchantments available so long as the user pays enough lapis lazuli and has a high enough experience level. I'll show you all of this. First, I analyzed exactly how the enchanting table looks and functions in Minecraft so I could replicate it in real life. It enables a player to enchant items in exchange for lapis lazuli and experience levels. Besides enchanting items, the table has a book that spins around slowly, but when the user comes near, it opens the book, flips pages, and follows the user's movements. And it looks like this on the outside, so that's what I went for. Since the book is so iconic, that's the first thing I built. I use Lego hinge bricks for the book cover so it can open and close. Cool, it actually feels like a book snapping shut. I built two pages to look like old parchment. Everything in this build will mimic Minecraft, so even the pages needed to have the blocky, pixelated look that is so recognizable. Once the pages were built, I attached them to the cover. Lastly, I made one more page that would eventually be able to move. It used some tan Technic parts that are kind of rare, but it was worth buying them so the colors were right. The back of the book has a bunch of connection points that I used to connect this spine. I set that aside for now and started working on an enchanting interface. Here's what I came up with. On the left you can see there are spots to place items, lapis, and an ID card that will have the user's experience level stored on it. On the right there are three options for enchantments, costing up to three experience levels and three lapis. These buttons will allow the user to preview or purchase an enchantment. A tap and hold will cause the machine to speak the enchantment preview, while a quick tap will purchase the enchantment. I added this color sensor array underneath the interface. One, so that a quick tap and tap and hold motion can be detected, and two, so that the user will immediately know which enchantments they qualify for based on the colors of the lights. Then I started working on how to detect items, quantity of lapis, and the user's experience level. An RFID sensor reads these RFID cards and RFID stickers, which go on 3x3 round LEGO tiles and then have an item sticker placed on top like this. After a little programming, this was the result. Nice, that's perfect. The sensor can even read through objects and from about one inch away, so the sensor can be hidden underneath the enchanting interface. I needed a way to have it read each token or card separately, so I got to work on that next. This simple mechanism is a great way to move an object in a controlled circular path. That's too fast, but if I slow it down, yep, that should do. After that was finished, I went back to making the book functional. The book will rotate until a user arrives, so it has to be able to spin without getting wires wrapped around itself. There are a few ways to solve that, but I picked the solution of connecting both the EV3 controller and all the motors to the same spinning platform. This motor will spin the platform. And this little assembly uses a worm gear to rotate two linkages that will open and close the book. Finally, a third motor was added to flip the movable page back and forth. This book is supposed to track the user, remember? So I purchased a camera that the EV3 controller can communicate with and got that connected too. This was getting heavy, so I built a roller bearing using curved gear racks and a bunch of 1x1 one one round tiles. I didn't come up with this bearing design, but I've seen it done a few times in the larger LEGO community. I placed one orange tile so I could track movement of the rolling tiles if needed. I put the two halves together and gave it a test. The bearing actually worked amazingly well. There are the tiles, rolling around. Ah, yep, yeah, there's the orange one. I added some pieces to make sure the two halves didn't come apart. After a little bit of work, I finally got the book connected, including the supports, linkages for the cover, and the U-joint for the movable page. Here's how they work.
The enchanting interface and the book were ready, so I just needed to connect everything on the base plate and get the enchanting table's walls built. Speaking of the walls, I got to work on those, using some really fun and unique LEGO colors, like medium lavender, dark purple, dark red, medium azure, dark turquoise, light aqua, and more. Then, using the enchanting interface as a guide, I tiled off the base plate and added these bricks with grooves and door rails. Then I created a gear train that would work for extending and retracting the enchanting interface. The left side worked, but the right side hit the motor too early. Moving the gear train back one stud fixed that though. This section will blend right in with the walls of the enchanting table. I put the interface on and gave it a test, connecting at least a couple wires to make sure they wouldn't get pinched. The test went great. So now, here was the puzzling thing. Enchanted items in Minecraft have a purple gleam to them. How would I replicate that using Lego bricks? Here's what I decided. I purchased some transparent purple stickers that I figured a robot could place on the tokens. Then again, it was hard enough for me to peel a sticker and place it, but I was up for a challenge. Here's the concept for how the robot will peel the stickers. By running the sticker paper over an object with a sharp angle change, like this lift arm, and keeping a lot of tension on the sticker paper, the stickers will peel themselves off the paper, just like this. Keeping that in mind, I got started on the mechanism to do that. Then I moved to creating my own LEGO compatible spools. These wheel hubs and four pulley wheels made for the perfect sticker spools. I needed one for the sticker paper that hadn't been used, and one to take up the excess paper. I connected them both on some axles, and then worked on getting them added to the main assembly. Here's how I wound the stickers onto the new LEGO spools. I wouldn't be needing that anymore. Next, I checked with an item token to make sure it was in the right location. Remember how I said there needed to be lots of tension on the paper for it to peel? Well, instead of using tan pins without friction ridges, like normal, I used blue pins with friction ridges to provide resistance. This wall of Technic bricks allows a variable number of blue pins to be added to increase the resistance to the right amount. Next, I added a motor to run the sticker peeler mechanism. I used a worm gear to gear it way down so the torque was increased enough to overcome the resistance of the pins with friction ridges. Then I gave it a test. The first test didn't work out so well because the resistance was too small, but adding a few more high friction pins would end up fixing that issue. Now the stickers were peeling off like they were supposed to. Then it was time to add away from the machine to place the peeled sticker on the item token. It turned out to be pretty simple. I just added a motor that would swivel a rubber bumper to press the sticker onto the token. I realized I should probably add some cable guards since several cables will be moving around near gears, so that came next. Everything was almost complete, but I definitely needed a way to store all the lapis that users spent on enchantments. So I built a lapis throne and put a machine lapis on it. The RFID sensor will take the lapis stored on the user's token and transfer it to the machine lapis token instead. That way the owners of the enchanting table can revel in all the lapis they get from users. Yeah. <laughs> 
I added another EV3 controller to run the motors and sensors located in the base of the enchanting table and finally got the book connected. I tried to keep everything in the base below a certain height so the spinning platform wouldn't catch on anything. I had to lower a couple small things but nothing too major. I already built the walls of the enchanting table, but I needed the top too, so I built these two halves which will allow me to still remove the walls easily. Then I completed the build by covering up the book's mechanisms with the dark red cover like you see in the game. Here's how it all looked when I was done. Of course, if we want to enchant at level 30, we're going to need 15 bookshelves. I use the standard design for most LEGO Minecraft sets. After some programming, it was time to run the 100% working LEGO Minecraft enchanting table. To start with, this is how the machine vision works for tracking a user's movement. I'm just walking along and, oh look, a random enchanting table. When the machine's camera sees me, the book will open and start tracking me. Here's the camera's point of view. It even followed me when I was done with the shot and was walking back to the camera. Now for the rest of the enchantment table. Let's see who stops by. Well, hello there, Steve. At Steve level 40. Seven lapis. A break in one. Fortune one at Steve level 17 required. Sealed touch at Steve level 30 required. Ah, you bought them breaking one, eh? Well, it's not the greatest, but we'll get to some better enchantments soon. The RFID sensor rewrites the RFID card and tag to decrease one XP level and one lapis. The enchantment process takes a bit, but are you ready to see how the robot did applying the enchantment sticker? Enchantment complete. XP level is now 30, and remaining lapis is 6. Full enchantment is unbreaking one efficiency one. Hey, the machine peeled and applied the sticker pretty well. After that user leaves, the book closes up and the enchantment interface returns to the table. While the drawer is closing, the RFID sensor rewrites the machine lapis token to add the lapis that the user paid. Okay, on to some better enchantments. Hopefully. Hey Zuri! Going for a level 30 enchantment on a trident, I see. Looks like Zuri wants a different level 30 enchantment. So what do we do in Minecraft? Dummy enchantments are the answer. This real life enchanting table can do that too. Enchantment complete. XP level is now 38 and remaining lapis is 3. Full enchantment is 5 aspect 1. Loyalty 3. It looks like that was the one Zuri was hoping for. It looks really cool with the table walls on, but there's a lot going on inside, so I'll show you the next enchantment without the cover. Remember, this is what's happening underneath the top of the enchanting interface with the RFID sensor detecting the user's card, amount of lapis, and item to enchant. Wow, really? That's a pretty good enchantment. <laughs> if this video amazed you, please help me out by sharing it on your social media and watch the working crafting table video too. Hit subscribe or leave me a comment and I'll get back to you ASAP. Thanks for watching.